Edge at 11 starts now. Tonight on The Edge, how low will we go? This is just the beginning of a bitter, bitterly cold week. Yeah, many schools are canceled tomorrow because of the frigid temperatures. Captain Rich Luterman has more on our freezing forecast. Rich? Taryn and uh, Dave, it's a cold pattern. We're stuck in it for another five or six days. Notice where the active wintry weather is down across the mid-Atlantic. Even some ice down there in Alabama and Mississippi. So you know it's cold when there's ice in the deep south. You can see mostly quiet right now, but some of this very very light snow here in northern Indiana, northern Ohio may clip southeast Michigan through the overnight, and that's why there could be as much as a half an inch of snow through the overnight period. Up in Gaylor, they got some flurries and some haze up there, 11 degrees, pretty cold. The uh, lake effect snow is confined to the areas near Lake Michigan, so if your travel plans take you tomorrow morning near Muskegon or Grand Rapids, you'll find a bit of snow, but daytime highs today, 9 degrees, that's all we could muster, 9 degrees, it's 7 right now with the breeze from the south and west. You can see the numbers for a lot of us in the single digits. There's that flow from the southwest, adding a further chill to the atmosphere. Wind chills at times uh, down around minus 10. Lansing, there's Jackson, Ann Arbor, close to minus 10. But it's cold all across the Great Lakes. That's not going to be changing anytime soon. It's cold into the deep south, 19 in Dallas. There's minus 3 in Minneapolis. So the cold remains. Weak system passes to our south tomorrow looks like another chance for some light snow Thursday into Friday. You'll see it all in the seven day forecast for the rest of tonight. Just some light snow showers after midnight, less than an inch, but down to six as we keep those pets inside tomorrow. Breezy, frigid, some morning flurries lingering 10 degrees. That's it. So very similar to what we had today. And then right there is the seven day forecast. Some light snow showers Thursday, Friday. It stays chilly into the weekend, but next week we do see a pattern change and that means warmer numbers next week. Don't forget all Always get the latest forecast. Check it out. The Fox 2 Weather app. You can download it for free in the App Store or in Google Play. Darren, da uh, da Dave and Taryn, back to you. Thank you, Rich. It's one of those nights where you don't have to be out in the cold. If you don't have to, it's best to stay indoors. Well, that's the truth. And Fox 2's Dave Kitchen has more on the risks of frigid nights like this. Okay, so you certainly need more layers than the old spirit of Detroit here when it comes to these frigid, frigid temperatures. We went around town. We found some warming centers to tell you about. Also found people determined to brave the cold for a big concert. Terrible. It's absolutely terrible. Yeah, but worth it. Worth it. Madonna, though, yes, we would. Anything for Madonna. This group is among many taking on the elements to see the material <laughs> grow in the city. So now, yeah, despite dangerously cold temps and what felt like a forever long wait for the doors to open. How long have you been outside? Yeah. Ten minutes, I think so. Five minutes. Five minutes. Yeah. Five minutes. Yeah. And, and you're surviving okay, huh? It looks like. <laughs> you're doing the best you can, yeah. <laughs> Ask me five minutes. You traveled from Houston and you're waiting in this bone chilling cold what's it what's it like for you i walked 18 minutes from my hotel to here 72 dollars for an uber ride that is like ridiculous so uh now they won't let us in and how, how do you feel about that waiting what's it like waiting in all this my tears are freezing up um it's cold um we're ready to see the show but health experts say the danger is in the prolonged time outside when it gets colder and colder maximizing your risk of getting frostbite or hypothermia Priority one is if you can minimize your time outside, that is your best option. Obviously, there's some folks that work outside or you need to be outside and that's unavoidable. So then the way you dress is really important and layering is critical. Uh, the inner layer, the layer closest to our skin, you wanna wear something that can move moisture away from our skin. Moisture accelerates the damage that cold can do to us. So you really wanna stay dry. Thankfully, there are solutions around town that can help people out. So tomorrow there'll be card playing that'll take place in here. Uh, they play pinochle and there's uh, knitting that'll take place tomorrow. Brett Talander runs a warming shelter at the Salter Community Center in Royal Oak. This morning we had seniors who were coming in who've been without power, without heat for several days now. And uh, one gentleman returned home hearing his power was back on and his house was at 34 degrees. So we we're able to open the facility here at eight o'clock this morning. We'll be open until eight tonight. And I'm sure we'll be open throughout the week because I think the temperatures are actually getting a little worse. And we have a full list of warming centers across the metro area on our website, fox2detroit.com. In downtown Detroit, Dave Kinchin on the edge.
The cold weather not helping matters when it comes to dealing with issues of flooding. A water main break caused problems in one Detroit neighborhood, and then not far away, a broken hydrant caused huge issues for those during the evening commute. We've been here for almost 13 years, and we never had a problem like that. Derek Parche was greeted with a flooded street when he left his home on Lindsay near Clarita in northwest Detroit. I had to go around the block actually to get in. The problem, a broken water main sent freezing water into the street. I'm hoping it don't get so bad where it cracks our pipe in the basement because we got a neighbor down the street, and she says she don't have any water at all. An issue which extended up and down the street, and with temps well below freezing, there is real concern that things will get worse. I'm hoping the city see this, come out here and, and make some repairs because we need them. The city of Detroit's water and sewerage department sent a statement which reads in part, gas and other utilities are getting marked before DWSD excavates the location of the water main break and makes the repair Tuesday morning. We appreciate the residents calling DWSD and for their patience. At around five this evening, the running water forced drivers off the Southfield freeway as well. Here's why. Video from a Sitco gas station above the freeway at Plymouth Road shows a semi taking out a fire hydrant. Water was pouring onto the freeway below. Because of the extreme cold, the road was closed so crews could shut off the water to the hydrant. And NDOT says those roads are now back open. According to crews at the scene, they plan to come back on Tuesday to repair the broken fire hydrant. Well, good to know. And also making news tonight, police are investigating a homicide in Clinton Township. Officers were called to the Peachtree Apartment Complex on Little Mac near Grossbeck earlier this evening for a homicide investigation. We're told a woman was found shot to death inside one of the buildings. This appears to be a domestic situation. The male suspect is not in custody at this time and is considered armed and dangerous. Also tonight, a Clinton Township man is found murdered in Pontiac. 27-year-old Jason Hunt was shot and killed inside a business in a strip mall on West Huron near Johnson yesterday afternoon. His 25-year-old cousin also shot and taken to the hospital, we're told, in critical but stable condition. The Oakland County Sheriff's Office is handling this investigation. Anonymous tips can be made to Crime Stoppers at 1-800-SPEAK-UP. Tomorrow, a key hearing in the homicide of Detroit synagogue leader Samantha Wall. A preliminary hearing will be determined or determined if there's enough evidence against 28-year-old Michael Jackson Bolanos to stand trial. Wall was found dead outside her Lafayette Park home back in October. Investigators arrested Jackson Bolanos about two months later, believing that he broke into her home and killed her during a robbery. Stay with Fox 2 for the latest developments on this case. A scary scene inside a mall. It sounded like gunshots. A smash and grab robbery of a jewelry store set off panic at Great Lakes Crossing over the weekend. As Fox News Jessica Dupnack reports, this is becoming an all too common crime at some of Metro Detroit's most popular shopping destinations. Come here, come here. Sledgehammer smashing through the jewelry cases. In seconds, this trio able to break through and get $11,000 worth of jewels until someone yells police. 5050. The commotion last Saturday, sending folks in the food court at Great Lakes Crossing Mall into a total panic. Early calls into Auburn Hills Police, reports of an active shooter quickly debunked by the PD. Was it worth it? On Monday, Chris Hatter dined right in front of the mess left behind from the trio before they got away. They're still on the loose. It should be surprising, but it's not. You know, the world is changing, so people get more desperate. Auburn Hills police are on the case. Meantime, the Hellsburg Diamond store back open Monday when we went by. They could come back right now and do the same thing in a getaway. Smash and grab robberies like this, they're certainly not new. We've reported about them right here on Fox 2. Actually, in Troy last year, they were dealing with the crew. Same MO using sledgehammers. In those cases, though, the thieves were caught. Smash and grabs are um, very dynamic and uh, jarring for people that witness them. Last August, Great Lakes Crossing and Oakland Mall in Troy were hit by this crew, linked back to his cell from Chile in South America, highly trained here solely to target jewelry stores. In this case, Captain Josh Jones says they were very aggressive. They sprayed pepper spray um, before committing the sm actual smashing them to chests and grabbing the jewelry out of that. The group of four charged for their crimes. Come here, please come here. 
Auburn Hills police hoping for the same outcome in this latest smash and grab, asking anyone who saw something to speak up. Reporting at Great Lakes Crossing Mall, Jessica Dupnack on the edge. Well, months after new contracts are signed between the Big Three and the UAW, Stellantis lays off more than 500 temporary part-time workers. We spoke with one of those workers who says she feels betrayed by the union. And I feel like my whole world was ripped from underneath me all at once. Um, I was not expecting to get that kind of news. I feel hurt. I feel devastated. Um, the company sent out a letter stating that certain supplementals would be terminated due to uh, poor performance and attendance issues. I personally have a perfect track record with the company. Ashley Wilmoth tells us after working at the Warren Truck Assembly plant for nine months, she had just received paperwork to become full time when she got the layoff notice. In a statement, Stellantis says the move was made to improve the efficiency, productivity, and market competitiveness of the facilities and implements at its future plans.